Hi, Jonathan Schrager here, boxing reporter. We're here at Bramall Lane, home of Sheffield United. Kel Brooks here, doing a presentation with the Sheffield United chairman. And it's the day before Kel heads out to Spain to start his training camp for the Sky Pay-Per-View fight at the end of May versus Frankie Gavin. In favor of the winner by majority decision, I had uh, mentioned to you earlier I, I'm, uh, I had fallen away from boxing when it all went paper. Yeah. And uh, becoming involved in Sheffield, which is a great boxing city, has sort of uh, really the flame for us. We've, uh, so we've been following Cal, fantastic you know, uh, year for him. And um, there are other you know, Sheffield United uh, uh, former players like Curtis Woodhouse, who's done well in boxing. But this is just a, it's a boxing city, so it's great to be getting back into it. How are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? Short. Short quarter to each other. Amazing. Three ounce gloves. No business there. We have to go buy that. Oh, that's it then. I'll give you a drink in there. Cheers. Forget it. It's dad to earth, like all Sheffielders are. He'll come and talk to you and shake hands with you. I've actually had my photo took with him. And I'm so proud of that photo that my daughter in law has got to add it to printed and put on a frame. I think Kel's, you know, sort of, uh, he's following in the footsteps of Nassi and Mabby, but probably, you know, eclipsed everything that Naz did now. Um, you know, probably end up being one of the best boxers, probably if not the best boxer to come out of Sheffield since Harold Graham, probably. Um, so, yeah, it's great for Sheffield, you know, he's putting us on the map, so, but really pleased for him. You were good, though. Even my missus recognised you. Oh, she didn't know Kel, but she recognised you. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And you were uh, on mix with Steve yesterday, weren't you, Steve Bailey? Yeah, yeah. You know, Mark, you've got a good one. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. 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 Madison Square Garden, yeah. World Tycle. And just before he starts crying and start letting him win. And then he starts crying and he says, it's me, it's me, it's not, it's not, it's that monster munch. And then he wants another fight and, and he could never tire him out or obsessed with fighting this monster munch. Yeah. But I told him from day one, one day you would have been a champion of one. Yeah. The pressure I put on him from being a little kid is unbelievable, but he can't let me down yet. Yeah. Can't let me down yet. These are the shorts what I wore in California when I won the world title. And I think it would be fantastic to put them up in the museum here yeah, uh, for everyone to see. You know, it's been the biggest achievement of my career so far. You know, when I walked in at nine year old, put a pair of boxing gloves on, I've always dreamt of becoming a world champion. And, uh, you know, in August, I went out there and, you know, I captured the world title. Around the house, uh, like you just said, with a with a monster munch, um, monster munch. What is it? What, what is it? Chris monster munch. Yeah, monster munch. Yeah, yeah. So uh, used to get them, and that was my first sparring partner. 
Right. And they used, used to give me a few clips and they could see I was getting mad. And then when they got, got me to Edge, where I was nearly like ready for like crying, they used to say, go on then. And, like, and I used to steam into this monster munch and uh, I was the sparring, uh, sparring partner right there. But he, he, I never gave up. I was always, you know, always like wanting to get into it. First event, and um, obviously excited to go and uh, watch a good fight. And it's just a good atmosphere in the place, and definitely go back. Lovely, and, and his uh, signature song, "All of the Lights," is renowned to be one of the sort of theme tunes, really, with inboxing. What was it like when that dropped and he walked out? Ah, it was good. Obviously, a lot of people were obviously there for the main event to watch him, and when he came out, the music came on, and we started offering cheers and, and celebrating and singing and whatnot. And it was just a really good feeling about the place. Really, we're, we're so proud of you, and we're delighted that you're a Blade and that you're willing to make this contribution to the museum, and we'll make sure that they receive a special place of honor there. It's, you know, I think I speak for every Blade um, and all of Sheffield you know, in expressing our utter delight at your accomplishment. And so, uh, um, end of all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Great to have you. Looking to, to see. To see who the winner winner is that fight in May with Pacquiao. And I think they're earning that much money. They've earned that much money in the career so far. It's not about money for them now, it's about a legacy. And in their mind they think, oh this guy from Britain, he's got he's got the other belt, let's fight him. But they don't know that they're fighting someone who's in the prime. And uh, you know, it's not gonna happen like they think it's gonna happen. You know, uh, so I just, I just want the opportunity. I, you know, I, I've got the other title. If that, if that if the chance comes to me and, uh, and they want to unify the division and we make it happen, Vegas baby, MGM, let's go September whenever it can whenever it can be done. I'm ready to go over there and put it all on the line. And the new.